What's going on, everyone? I'm just a typical, average American, here today to react and learn about dead giveaways that someone is British. Now, from what I've heard, it's actually kind of easy to spot us Americans. Like, when we're out in the world, we kind of make ourselves known <laughs> through our actions and our behaviors. Americans are apparently kind of easy to spot. <laughs> so today, I thought it'd be fun to learn about what are the signs that you might be British. So I want to take a look at this Reddit discussion where someone asked, what is a dead giveaway that someone is British? And a whole bunch of British people responded to this question. And I want to take a look at some of the top answers, starting with, if you have strong opinions about queuing <laughs> and, and calling it queuing. Yes, yes, exactly. Oh my gosh, you know, I've like reacted to enough British things at this point where I know the word queuing, but make no mistake, queuing is like not a word here in the United States. So if you use the word queuing, that would be a dead giveaway. Well, I guess the, <laughs> the elephant in the room here is the dead giveaway off the bat would be if you have a British accent, but Americans are terrible. We're terrible at identifying accents and where an accent is from geographically. And that actually wouldn't be a dead giveaway, even though it should be. So besides the accent, saying the word queuing would be a dead giveaway that you're British and having any opinions about queuing and and also thinking that queuing should be like enforced and respected that is <laughs> well a lot of americans do kind of think that but uh it's kind of the <laughs> it's kind of wild and crazy out here we call it waiting in line we don't call it queuing and a lot of the time a lot of americans don't respect the queue and don't abide by that and that is just kind of a way of life so if you feel strongly about that you are probably british yes that's right, you obey the rules of the queue. Don't get me wrong, I really, really admire this part of British culture. I would love for Americans to get on board with the queuing. We could even switch over, we could call it queuing, it'd be great. The word queue looks like a bunch of vowels lining up for, <laughs> for some. <laughs> the word queue looks like vowels lining up for something. Like the vowels themselves are queuing in the word queue. I've never, never thought about that <laughs> in my life. Let's keep going. That's a good one. That's absolutely true. What else? Dead giveaways that someone is British. They are polite to people they hate. <laughs> and insult people that they like. <laughs> These are funny. And I think part of the comedy here is how true this probably is. Um, so British people are polite to people they hate, um, maybe, maybe even like passive aggressive or something or like sarcastic. I, I feel like that kind of goes along with it. Or maybe it's just like a British sentiment or British culture to <laughs> not let someone know you hate them and in fact be polite. Americans are definitely more okay with creating uncomfortable situations here and and we're definitely more willing to let people know what we think of them, even though it can be uncomfortable. Um, whereas I think this is probably, I, th I think I've heard this is more of a British thing to be a, a little more agreeable, to get along more, not necessarily make your opinion about someone known. And then you <laughs> insult people that you like. Uh, this is like in a loving way or what do you call this, like banter? Um where British people, you actually make fun of your friends. <laughs> you insult the people. This is such an awesome comment. Poli where poli <laughs> British people are polite to people they hate and are mean to people they like. <laughs> that is so funny. <laughs> and I think there's truth to that. I know you said you didn't want a drink, but I got you a pint anyway, you knobhead. <laughs> that's, that's what you're saying to your friend, right? <laughs> Proceed with, hey, look here. You have a rendition of how I buy my friends drinks. I'm British. Trust. Guys, really, I'm Brit. <laughs> oh, oh, he's talking to... <laughs> he's talking to the people commenting on his... Uh, 
<laughs> his comments there. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, what else do we have? They ask you and everyone else in the office how you like your tea. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes, I've never thought about this one. This would be a dead giveaway that you're British. Ask everyone in the office how you like your tea and never ask again as they'll remember it forever. <laughs> That's... <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yes, tea is definitely totally a British thing. Um, that's actually kind of a, a stereotype here in America. When we think of British people, we think in British culture, we think of tea immediately. And I don't even think that's really a stereotype. It's just kind of true. British people really do enjoy tea and many Brits have tea like every day, right? So it's just true. It's not like a uh, fake generalization or anything. I think it's true. And this person's saying, uh, <laughs> spotting a Brit if they ask everyone in the office how they like their tea. Are there many different ways to have your tea? Like, I don't even know about all this. this I didn't know the tea got that deep or complicated. Like, I think in America, we have coffee, and there's many different ways to have your coffee. Is, is there's many ways to have your tea? Really? What would those be? I, I, okay, that's that's for another day, I think, to learn about that. And then you commit it to memory. You never forget how someone wants their tea. That's like part of their personality, apparently, forever. <laughs> that's that is one of the most British things I've heard today, for sure. <laughs> the trick is not to remember what an individual has, but to remember. How many have sugar? Just milk. No milk. Oh. So it's like your tea can have different proportions of sugar and milk. Is that is that the main thing of how you like your tea? Or my personal favorite life hack is to make the tea so appallingly bad the first time that they never let you do it again. <laughs> oh, yes. If you don't, <laughs> it's a good hack if you don't want to be getting people tea. Sounds like a polite thing to do, though. Okay, interesting. Um, milk and tea. Man, we don't even... We don't do tea here. And I definitely have never seen someone put milk in tea. That's interesting. Uh, okay, let's keep going. Dead giveaways. Someone is British. These are very good so far. You can tell someone's British quite a few different ways. Not just from how they speak, but what they talk about. If they're talking about queuing and tea... <laughs> and they're mean to you if you're friends and they're mean to you they might just be British when they say cheers as an expression of gratitude most of the time and then the mate that comes next cheers mate cheers mate that, that sounded Australian don't Australians say cheers as well Australian Australians say mate a lot at least, that's what us Americans think. I, I think they do. Um, cheers. Yes, back to cheers. Cheers is such a British thing. It's interesting because I, I used to see cheers like on the internet sometimes in comments. And I was like, what? What is with people saying cheers? And it finally dawned on me like it, it's British people saying cheers in comments and stuff because I... You don't hear cheers here in America. You never hear cheers. It's a very interesting word. So they're saying it's an expression of gratitude. It's like, thanks. Can't you say cheers when you're leaving each other? You're like, you're. it's like saying goodbye or like have a good day. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah, I like it. I, I like it, but I, I could never say it. I'd feel like I'm a poser or something because like I never say it. I never hear people say it, but... It's really nice. I actually really like cheers when I think about it. I like that. Cheers, mate. That was bang on. <laughs> uh, I personally like ta. Ta? What is ta? I used to work in touristy area of the U.S. We got a lot of British customers. I'd always get a kick out of it when they said ta instead of thanks. Ta? Te? Ta instead of thanks? Is that a thing? I've never heard that in my life. Ta? Am I saying it right? Ta instead of thanks? I just feel like I would have come across that at some point in my life before. In a movie or TV or on the internet or... Ta? 
Is that thanks? Let me know. Someone, please let me know. I'm, I'm confused. <laughs> okay. Short way of saying thanks. All right. What's some more giveaways that you are British? When you, uh, when they catch, oh, when you catch their eye in public, the British person, they'll pretend to be looking for someone else in every other direction. <laughs> you just accidentally lock eyes and you're like, oh, uh, yeah, I, I was, no, I was looking right past you. I was looking over there. Like, why? Because it's, is it rude to make too much eye contact? It's rude to like, maybe be like you were staring at someone. So if you catch each other's eye in, in the wild, in public, they will pretend to be looking for someone else in every direction. That's very, that seems like a very polite thing to do. Very funny to me because some Americans are like that, but so many Americans do not care if they are staring at you. They do not care if you see them staring at you. It's very weird to me. Like, I'll be going about my day and I'll look at someone in public and they might be staring at me um, randomly and they won't, they'll just stare at me even if I look at them and I'm like, huh? Are they looking at me? They'll just continue to stare. Like Americans just don't care sometimes about social etiquette and stuff. I, I'm an American and I think that's weird. But uh, there's a lot of people here, man, that stare and don't care. Whereas this person's kind of saying most British people will avert their eyes and be like, oh, I wasn't staring. I was looking for someone. I, I think that's more polite for sure. In some areas of the UK, staring into someone's eyes as you walk past can be seen as aggressive. Wow, aggressive like you want to start a fight or something? Oh, jeez. Yeah, there's definitely, like, if you were in a high crime area of the United States, don't stare at people. They'll, they'll probably stare at you. Don't stare at them because you're pro that means something. Like, you're challenging them or something. Um, yeah, I think staring is weird. A lot of Americans do it. <laughs> I'm probably the guy looking around like, oh, no, I, I wasn't staring. <laughs> um... As a Londoner, I assumed that happened everywhere. We're like cats. Stare us in the eyes and you're asking for a fight? <laughs> you better look away to show your submissiveness. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. I feel like it really is that way in some places. Here in America, too. People are just waiting for you to stare. Oh, man. Maybe some people are just staring because they kind of like looking at you. Maybe it's a compliment. Who knows? <laughs> Best not test that theory. All right, what are some other giveaways? Someone is British. The British people in my expat community always use the expression half eight. Half eight? Meaning 8.30. Oh, I don't know any non-British people that say that. This seems to surprise them all. all. Half eight? I've never heard that as well. Now, here in America, we say half past eight. We say that. I mean, not, not too many people, but it is, a, it is a phrase. You can be like a quarter past eight, half past eight, quarter till nine, all that stuff. But just half eight, I wouldn't know what you're talking about. If you were like, yeah, it's half eight. I'd be like, what? Half a what? What happened to the eight? There's only half of it. My God. Um, I didn't know. Is this a British thing? To say half, half nine, half ten. Uh, what we would say is, we'd say half past ten. So it's very, very similar, actually. Um, interesting. I've never heard that one before. I didn't know that. Now I know that would be a giveaway that you're British, for sure. That's a, that's a really cool one, because that's really, really obscure. Very, very subtle. Very, like, I don't think most Americans know that one, or have ever heard that one before. Um, half eight or saying like that. Is that true? Interesting. I like that. All right. What else? What's some more giveaways? Someone is British. A dead giveaway that someone is not British. <laughs> okay. If you want to identify the rest of the planet that's not British, it's that they call it British when they mean English. Oh, ah. So British people will be specific and be like, I'm Scottish, 
or Welsh or English or or what have you. Um, whereas, yeah, this is a good one. This is one I wasn't thinking about because I think it, it is it like offensive or annoying where if you're from England, you're from England, someone's like, oh, you're British. You're British. I don't know. Like here in America, no one would be like offended if, if you said you're American where they're instead they're like, I'm from Georgia. Call, call me a Georgian. Like instead of an American like that, not really a thing here. We don't really expect to be called our state, but that's different. What we're talking about are entire countries. So that makes it, it makes sense to me. Interesting. So <laughs> if someone calls you British, well, okay, here, here's the thing. I think British people are okay being called British. But if someone is trying to say England, like, oh, you're, f they're, they're meaning to say England, but they say Britain, that's annoying. That's offensive. That's like, those are not interchangeable words. They mean different things. I think that's where the, the annoyance comes in. Uh, I think most British people would be fine being called British, of course be perfectly fine. But if they mean to say English or Scottish or whatever and say British, that's bad. Those are not directly interchangeable. I think that's what it is. Okay, okay. What are other dead giveaways that someone is British? That That is a good one because that is definitely something an American would do. Not like just be like, oh, UK, Britain, England, all the same thing. All interchangeable words. They mean exactly the same thing. America, many Americans do think that. Um, not to be mean, but just kind of out of ignorance, unfortunately. So that's definitely a good one. Yeah. All right. Other giveaways. Someone is British. When they say they're getting pissed. And it doesn't mean angry. Right. Yes. This is, this is a good one. Because this is a word that is commonly used in Britain and commonly used here in America, and it means completely different things, but this would be like saying pants, and it means different things. Trousers and pants mean different things. Um, chips and crisps and cookies and biscuits, and it, yeah, all that stuff would be a dead giveaway that you're either a probably American or British, although there's probably a lot of other countries that use these words in different ways. It, it wouldn't necessarily pinpoint exactly where you're from. Uh, but Britain is definitely a place where pissed means drunk. Drunk. And here in America, pissed means you are angry. You are very pissed off. Uh, that's a funny one. That's a funny one that's very, very different, yes. Um, let's see, is there any more, any more here real quick? Dead giveaways, someone's British. I'm still waiting to go to the States so I can ask someone if I can bum a fag off them. <laughs> Yeah, okay. This this one had to make it too. I just want to see the reaction. Yeah. Uh, funny enough, I know this is a British phrase. Like, bumming a fag. Fag means cigarette. Here, the word fag is derogatory. Like, it's not okay to say. It's not okay to call someone that. You're trying to be mean. Like, it's, it's a derogatory word for a homosexual and that's widely understood here in America. So, yes, if a British person said this here in America, um, a lot of Americans would be like, kind of like, whoa, what? But th there's a fair amount of Americans who know that fag means cigarette in Britain. This has become kind of popular because it is a, it's a really, like, big difference, startling difference between our cultures. So this has gained some popularity in the sense that there are a lot of Americans who have heard of this. Oh, bumming a fag. Oh, in, in Britain, that means you want a cigarette. Ha, 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 ha. Like that kind of thing. There's a lot of Americans who have know that one. So it might not be as shocking as you think, but it would definitely shock. <laughs> but with that being said, there's a lot of Americans who don't know and would be like, what do you want to bum off? What? Huh? Like that kind of thing, for sure. <laughs> yeah, that would be kind of funny. Anyway, there we have it. That was really fun. That was really interesting. 
I just thought this would be a fun topic to look at. Um, of course, this is like generalizing and not all British people are going to behave in this exact way. But I think these were some really cool telltale signs, giveaways that you might be British if you do some of these things. And there were quite a few here that I'd never even heard of before that were actually really interesting, like British behaviors and words that I, I didn't know before, but now I'll know. Now I'll be able to spot you from a mile away. You better watch out. I might even stare at you, <laughs> stare at you, and then you'll have to look away and I'll go, oh, oh, British, British, they they looked away. <laughs> or maybe we'll just get in a fight. I'm not sure how that works exactly. But anyway, I enjoyed this quite a bit. If you enjoyed this as well, feel free to give this video a like or leave a comment with your thoughts on any of these uh, comments and the giveaways that someone are British, or feel free to give your own giveaway that someone is British. That'd be very funny. And if you're interested in more videos like this, me reacting to Britain and British culture and learning things about Britain for the first time, feel free to subscribe for more. And until then, thanks for watching and see you next time.